So the origin story connected to this is where I make connection. It's where I make connection. And so what is your origin story connected to your purpose? What is your origin story connected to the season that God has you in? There has to be a story. One, because there's connectivity. You, you become drawn into me. And whether the person at the mocktail party ever remembers my name or not, they're going to remember our encounter. And I don't care if they remember my name. Isn't that the beauty of it? That's what the disciples did. They didn't come to say, I am Paul. No, they came to say, I know a God. I met a man who came as flesh to die for our sins. This is beautiful. This is a beautiful representation of how we should show up on a pulpit, on a pedaling device, on a podcast, on a platform. Listen to all those P's. I love alliteration and told you I sell words. Anything that you do is connected to him and glorifying his name. So I started to describe my origin story connected to how and why I sell words. So in silence, my hubby and I driving, I'm processing, gosh, when did I start selling words? When did I start loving words? When did I become infatuated with words? I thought about when I first wrote poetry in ninth grade because I had an emo boyfriend who wrote me songs and poems. And I'm like, well, I got to write something back. And I started falling in love with words. I started looking up concepts and context of words. This is before I was in my faith. And God has used all of these things for good. It's so incredible to watch what he does through our eagerness, through our passions. And he cultivates us. Whether we think we're self-cultivating or responding to a loved one that is not really a loved one, but a lust one when we're young. And then I thought back further. I'm like, gosh, no, there was things before that. I had been on stages before that. I had gone to the mayor youth council before that and sat at a board with other trusted individuals talking about vision for our city as a seventh and an eighth grader. If I rewind before then, words mattered when I was making huge poster signs and I was running for president, I was running for secretary, I was running for these uh, student government experiences. I remember when words mattered, when words hurt me because of what was said to me, opposition, insultation, accusation. When I was little, those words that carried weight, even when they said that they shouldn't, don't listen to them. I didn't know what it meant to dust, take the dust, shake the dust off of my clothes like Paul did, because that was an exterior sign of what was happening internally based on what Jesus himself said to do when they would go and say, you're not going to be welcomed everywhere you go. Every people group is not going to listen to you and that's okay. You're not meant to talk to them. Because every ear will hear and every eye will see the goodness and glory of God through somebody because that's what God does. He creates a bunch of somebodies and my somebody people group is not the same as your somebody people group, which is why I always push you off the cliff to say there are people waiting for you. And instead of holding on to these worries and these fears and this anxiety connected to you speaking, there's a vision that I got to tell you about. There's a God I got to tell you about. I'm going to say it again. He says, do not be afraid. Speak out. Don't be silent for I am with you and no one will attack and harm you for many people in this city belong to me, meaning you are protected. And if you're not protected by the actual people in flesh, you're protected by angel armies. And so no matter the territory, no matter the dominion, no matter what you think you're afraid of, God's got you. He's gone before you. So when I zoomed all the way back, the origin story that I would share if I said, I sell words and they tell me what they think that that means. I hold space for them. I create that pregnant silence. I love that, Cheryl. And it's responded back and they're still in this space of curiosity. Do you realize that I've now spent about, 
I'll say two minutes, maybe a minute and a half with someone. I've exchanged joy. I've exchanged childlike play. I've exchanged uh, the curiosity that I mentioned. I've exchanged a variability to every previous mocktail conversation that they've had up until that point. Simply because I stopped with a period. Confidence and clarity with curiosity and creativity. Is this not our God? Is this not our God? Our crystal clear, this is the good news. It's that simple. Confident that no matter what happens, highs and lows of the world, he is who he says that he is. And connected to that, there is creativity in every single way that you see an individual show up to share the word, or you see the, the sky come to life in the sunrises and the sunsets. And he, every single day, he's drawing you in with curiosity to say, God, how? God, why? God, what? God, where? And the answer is in the words. I sell words. And I don't even have to have you pay for them. You don't even have to pay me for my words. You're on here right now for free. I love when I get a little change badge here and there, but I don't even do anything with it. It goes right back to the business. That's a whole nother book. That's a whole nother story. But it doesn't propel me. The word propels me and the word will never run dry. And so I'll never be out of business. Oh, praise God. <laughs> I'll never be out of business. There's a recession. I don't care. There's a financial hardship, yep, I don't care. Because what I care about is what is living, the living word. And so the origin story that was the one that dropped in my spirit that my husband was like excited by, who got ignited by, and maybe because he just did never hear me say it this way before, or maybe because he saw what sparked inside of me was this first story, and I'm gonna share it with you now. So for those of you who are ever at a mocktail party, you're never allowed to ask me what I do, because now you know. So let that conversation be for a stranger. Regardless, say, you gotta go meet that gal. You gotta go ask her what she does. <laughs> Challenge me. Okay, so when I was seven years old, I sat on a big red box. And there was lots of different colored boxes and balls sitting around. Imagine like the target entryway with all those huge balls. My kids always jump on them to this day. Like that. And there was lights and cameras. And I heard the word action. And when the word action came to me, it came through the handing of a microphone and a question. And the question doesn't have as much necessity in this moment. It was what happened after the cameras turned off. I remember answering with confidence. I remember looking right at the camera. I remember the response and the energy of the room. Seven. We we're so much more inclined and attuned as kiddos than we can be when we're adults because we are all up in our own feels and our body and our own minds and what's happening and what are they thinking and should I say this, should I not say this. There was no inhibition. I was so little. And afterwards, people came up to me in the studio and they said, wow, your words inspired me. Wow, your words inspired me. Fast forward like 23 years or so, I counted, 23 years later, when I decided to press play, this time the microphone wasn't handed to me. This time I picked out the microphone. It was actually gifted to me from a friend who knew a lot about sound. And the ultimate reason that I pressed play was because I had to understand other people's stories and I knew I had more words to share, but I yet had the lights, the cameras, and the action that I wanted. And so I made it, I created it because I was called into it. 